Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Mark, Mikel. I come from Barcelona. Uh, I'm very glad uh, to be presenting uh, this uh, project to you, um, especially at this time that I know it's a bit more difficult than usual. And uh, maybe the title is not that catchy, so what I would like you to remember is the name of the project, uh, which is uh, Wikipedia Cultural Diversity Observatory. Uh, and this is the problem that I tackle, the problem I've been working on for uh, now seven years. did my master's uh, degree uh, working on this problem, then my PhD. And now I'm at the stage that I want to uh, see if I can use research as a trigger to, to change, to improve cultural diversity, because uh, Wikipedia, uh, with its aim of uh, gathering the, the entire humanity knowledge, uh, still at the moment has a problem of cultural diversity. It does not reflect the, the entire world diversity and uh, all the different cultural forms. And, uh, and for this reason, uh, we need the cartography. We need to, to analyze the content. We need to understand uh, what is in and what is not. And it's a bit more complicated. I compare it uh, usually to the gender gap, but it's a bit more complicated because with the gender gap, you can really create two women for every man. You can uh, see a 50% threshold, which is something quite clear. With cultural diversity, you need a, a broader approach. And this is the reason that uh, uh, we created this project, which is the, the Observatory uh, for Cultural Diversity, as a joint space for researchers, activists, and developers. Uh, to uh, create this course, that is uh, to talk about the value of cultural diversity within the project, uh, to provide uh, metrics and visualizations, because with metrics and visualizations we can raise awareness and we can really show uh, what the situation is, where we are going, are we improving or not, uh, to organize, to transform this research into, into tools, to uh, support these tools and to uh, give them to communities and, and to their events so they can use them. And finally, to set a, a strategic goals because we need goals uh, as, a, as a way of uh, finding precise uh, steps that uh, we can see whether we need them or not. Okay, so the problem of cultural diversity, I, I approach it uh, in, in this way. Uh, and it's, it's quite a, a pragmatic approach uh, I know I, I would receive a lot of critics from uh, uh, anthropologists, but uh, I, I approach cultural diversity as the sum of all the concepts uh, from all the different contexts in the world uh, generated in all languages. This is a, a, a broad approach in which, we, in which we have a language spoken in a territory by some speakers that create concepts to explain that territory. That is the uh, most immediate world, that, that is their cultural context. Uh, with this definition, uh, we can start working on, we can start analyzing, and, uh, and we can divide the problem of, uh, of not being able to gather cultural diversity into a smaller problems. The first one is that some languages uh, and contexts, uh, they are not in Wikipedia, so they are not represented. And uh, the second one is they are represented in Wikipedia, but nobody knows about them. So they are lost in, in one small language, and the rest of the 300, they, uh, not, uh, they are not able to reach them. Uh, this has been, uh, uh, for most of the time, my, my biggest concern. How can we uh, uh, help this, this reaching? Because this is the easier way we can work on. Uh, we, can, uh, we can develop some tools, I mean, uh, we can develop some cartography, and this is the data set I developed, which is uh, named Cultural Context Content. This is a collection of articles for every language that is about uh, the, the context of the language. It's like a local encyclopedia inside every uh, Wikipedia. So for instance, uh, um, we would have the cultural context uh, for uh, Icelandic, with content about Icelandic uh, history, Icelandic language, Icelandic politicians, uh, Icelandic um, customs, all sorts of things about Iceland. And, and this, we would say that it's a clear mapping, country, language, and territory. And then we would have a bit more complicated context, which is uh, divided among different countries, like the Italian, with a part of Switzerland and, and, and part of uh, um, Slovenia as well. That, uh, and, and we would have many other languages which are spread uh, uh, across uh, the different continents like English or, or French. 
So in order to obtain this, this data set, this CCC, which is the root of what we work to, to, to bridge the gap and to, and to look for them, um, we, we need first to create a mapping between languages and territories. For this, I counted with uh, the Ethnolog uh, database, uh, which is uh, uh, at the moment uh, the most important database for languages, uh, which uh, sets the, the is ISO codes uh, for every language, and it tells specifically what it is spoken at the country level and at the regional level. Uh, for this particular mapping, I, I took the languages uh, with the native characteristic, with the indigenous characteristic, and with the official characteristic. So with this uh, sort of Rosetta Stone, I could start getting the CCC uh, by applying different strategies. The first strategy to, to create the CCC is easily to retrieve geolocated articles, because these are what defines the context, the territory what it is. Another strategy is to use specific keywords. So for instance, if I want to retrieve articles that go to the English CCC, I would use the English uh, keyword or the England keyword or the Great Britain keyword and uh, many other uh, territories, uh, names and many other demonyms and they would retrieve me another selection of articles. The, the third strategy, not that clean as the previous, is to use the, the, the category uh, graph. So using the keywords to retrieve the general category, I could go cra crawling down the, the graph and get more and more specific. So for instance, here we have performing hours in England. And then uh, at the latest level, we would find uh, articles like Dylan Moran, who is a comedian uh, uh, from Ireland. Other well, strategies are using Wikidata, properties like uh, location, country, language, and they all, to a certain uh, extent, they reflect this connection with the language and with the, and with the territory. So finally, uh, with all these features, uh, uh, we introduce them to the machine learning. I'm not going to extend on this, uh, to expand this, this uh, section, but uh, I'm going to be very glad to talk about it later, in, in case someone is interested. And, um, and with this machine learning uh, technique, uh, having a ground truth of uh, articles that we know for sure that they belong to a territory, another one that we know for sure that they do not belong because they belong to other territories, we can get the final collection of CCC. And the results are, are, uh, are quite, uh, I'm quite uh, happy with the results because we only have a 5% of false positive, 5% false negative, which is uh, quite a small uh, margin of error. So we get this final collection, this local encyclopedia inside every uh, Wikipedia, and then we can start working on, on it. So this this uh, collection, the CCC, is on average 25% of, uh, of a Wikipedia. In some cases, like the English or the Japanese, it's, it's more than half, which means that uh, uh, they have a lot to explain, and, uh, and they explain it uh, into many detail. Um, Unfortunately, uh, in African languages and Asian languages, this is much smaller. Um, when this content is created, it tends to be uh, more elaborated, with more references, with more bytes, with more images. And it also tends to be the, the most central part of uh, Wikipedia in terms of consumption. These are the most re read articles as well. So CCC, in a way, explains also whether Wikipedia is healthy or not, whether it's used by its society. And, um, and by looking at the non-Western uh, languages, we see that we have this problem of representation. We, we can work on it. But um, to continue with the sharing, by uh, examining the, the interwiki links in CCC, we see that the language gap, the articles that are not created um, in uh, one language that exists in another, uh, is mainly due to the, to the cultural gap, to the CCC. So we have uh, this uh, big magnitude of uh, difference uh, in terms of magnitude, uh, language of hundreds of thousand articles, others with the smaller. The language gap is impossible to bridge, but we know that the, the, the cultural gap is, is responsible for this. And what can we do? I, I think that it's really uh, impossible to, to bridge the language or the cultural gap. But uh, looking at, uh, at the different figures, we can propose a strategy, we can propose a specific goal. And, um, and I would say that uh, having just 100 articles uh, about every cultural context 
would be uh, reasonable uh, in order to have a minimal cultural uh, diversity, all cultural diversity in terms of Wikipedia languages. So th this would add up to 30,000 uh, articles. This may be a lot in some languages, and this may be perfectly doable to other languages. So in order to, to stimulate, uh, to reach this goal, I, I started uh, sorting the data, sorting each CCC, and I created some lists, some list of articles. And these are the top CCC articles, uh, which is a, a list of top priority articles in a way similar to vital articles, uh, but inside CCC. I use different features like the number of editors, uh, the number of uh, um, the page views, number of discussions, in order to discriminate among the, in its relevance in a way, to, see, uh, to find really relevant articles. Actually, the best one is editor, number of editors is the, the best one to see if an article is really relevant. And then other kind of features like keywords, uh, women, men, to select specific, uh, specific segments of CCC. Uh, in order to uh, uh, get more and more uh, interesting content, uh, especially this is important, especially for other gaps like gender gap that you you want to tackle just the the, the women. And then uh, with the language origin and the language target, we can get a table like this. Uh, we have a, a table. In this case, is the first 500 articles uh, men from the Cornish CCC and their existence in, in Catalan uh, Wikipedia. And we have the, the features in a, in a way to guide us to, to recognize whether these articles are uh, really good, uh, whether they need improvement. And then we have uh, their existence in the languages that cover best uh, the Cornish, in this case. And on the, on the final column, um, the, their existence in, in the, the other language. Um, this, this table you can play around. Uh, you, you can find this uh, in, the, in the page of the project, uh, Cultural Diversity Observatory in, in Meta. Um, and, and this is something that it, uh, it can be used in, in contests, in, in, in events of all kind. And, um, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful because we have a, a list uh, and, and, uh, and we can work on it. And then I created uh, two different panels uh, to help the dissemination and the coverage of, of the, each CCC. So we have the panel of the coverage that helps us uh, to cover uh, every language CCC. And here we have the percentage for every list of the 10 lists uh, of top CCC. And finally, the number of uh, articles that we, we got to cover. And then we have the equivalent panel at the inverse uh, with uh, uh, your own CCC, in this case the Catalan, and it's a spread uh, to the rest of the languages. Uh, by looking at these tables, these two uh, simple panels, what I saw is that uh, most of the languages, they do not even get to create 100 articles for each list. And this is something that uh, it's, it's really bad. Because it, it, we don't have 100 articles about men, 100 articles about uh, geolocated articles, about our context. We have an urgent need to explain our context with, with our own uh, perspective in our own language. And, and this is something to, to really work on. So we have the, the, the biggest languages, the, their most immediate goal would be to share to, and to cover, but the smaller ones, their most immediate goal is to represent. And this is where I come to the second part of the project, the one I'm, I'm working on at this moment. So after uh, knowing that that we can work on, on sharing. I thought, let's see what we can do with representation. So uh, we have concepts uh, uh, from one context that are not represented in their native language, but they exist, maybe they exist in other languages. And then, they, and then we have concepts that they are not represented in their native language and no language at all. And, and these are the really difficult ones. So let's start with, uh, with the first. What, what can we do uh, in order to, to represent uh, these, concepts, these concepts in the native language? Well, in this case, we need to look for the overlaps. The language that they coexist in the same territory, but have different status. This is the, the language is in, in state of uh, marginalization. 
And um, a good indicator of marginalization is the edits uh, code that actually the, it is providing the ethnolog data set. Uh, and the edits code uh, states uh, whether a language is official, whether it's used in education, whether it's, uh, um, it's widespread but uh, not uh, used in a legal way. Uh, each of the, the levels of, uh, of the edges code tells you whether a language is, is a striping or it's, it's, uh, it's entirely used. So, so actually, the overlaps, the language is spoken in the same territory, and, uh, and in the overlaps, um, I mean also spoken uh, with another language with a higher status, this is quite the norm. Um, we have that 253 languages out of the, out of the 300, are overlapped with another language of higher status, which is quite, the, for someone with a Western perspective, is quite uh, surprising. And the languages that overlap the most are English and Russian, followed by uh, uh, Hindi and Spanish. And, and this is quite the usual case in, in African languages. And I, I, will put a, I will put an example uh, of Luganda. Luganda Wikipedia has uh, around uh, 1,200 articles which is very small for a language that is uh, official at the national uh, level, but, uh, but not used in, in education. Um, using the previous CCC methodologies, we can look for the missing CCC. So that this is the, the, the concepts about the Uganda CCC that should be in Luganda language, but they are not. And we can look at it at the language of higher status, in this case, the English. And we see that the president of Uganda exist uh, in, in the Uganda CCC, but the Prime Minister of Uganda does not exist. We can see here the gap. We can, we can create this, this list of articles that they should be the first ones to be covered by a minoritized uh, language, just by looking at the language uh, of higher status. Um, another thing we can do is to look for the, the territories uh, in the world, the countries and subregions that are not covered by their uh, native language or their indigenous language. Uh, and we see that uh, there is a, a big uh, opportunity in Cameroon, uh, which has no native indigenous uh, Wikipedia, and, uh, and it has uh, many languages uh, in every uh, sub-region of Cameroon. We have uh, other opportunities in Australia, uh, even uh, in the uh, United States, Brazil. Uh, there are big parts of the world, it's not the case in Europe, uh, but there are big parts of the world to, to cover by indigenous, like by native languages. And finally, we, we can also look for the missing languages uh, in Wikipedia that are, uh, have a, a bigger potential to, to become Wikipedias. Um, in a, quite an arbitrary uh, way, I took two specific indicators uh, that I think that are quite uh, good to find a potential language, which is the, the edge in school, that is the, the language of social status, and uh, the number of speakers, because the, the higher the number of speakers, we might think that it might be easier, although there are many other sociological uh, uh, indicators that might explain that. And, and what I saw is that uh, in, uh, in the status, in Egypt's uh, uh, status number one, we have South Bembele, which is a, uh, a South uh, uh, African language uh, that might be relatively easier to, to get the Wikipedia. Then in, in number three, we have uh, the Bangladesh Chittagonian and uh, Sadri from India, which have uh, around uh, 12 and 15 millions of, of speakers. And, and this might also be potential uh, uh, Wikipedias. So uh, in this project, in, in the Cultural Diversity Observatory, uh, we get this data. We get this data, we, we explain it, we, we look for ways to, to communicate them. Um, um, for the, the future months, uh, for the next month, uh, we're going to work on, on, a, um, on a way to explain every month how many articles we are creating in every language about every other cultural context. So we know uh, whether we are really bridging the African gap or not, for instance, which was the topic of the last Wikimania. Um, we are creating this list that may be useful for, uh, for uh, all sorts of events. Uh, we are setting uh, some reasonable goals according to uh, the different uh, types of data. And I think that helping minorities and, and potential languages is a must. Uh, we, we really need this to, to do this for, uh, to, to get to the sum of human knowledge. <laughs>
And, and I think that we, we need to encourage uh, languages not only to build a Wikipedia, but most importantly, uh, to, uh, to represent their context, to represent their knowledge that it's really uh, their perspective of the world. Because uh, this is really theirs and no one else's. These are uh, the points of view that uh, if they do not uh, share them, they do not represent it, no one else will, will get. And I think this, this difference is, is key. We cannot, uh, I think that we cannot um, encourage them to create a Wikipedia without valuing their, their knowledge about the, their context. Um, I think that each language has this uniqueness, and, uh, and in this project, uh, we help to push, this unique, uh, to push this uniqueness and represent it, and also to share it. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope to answer your questions. And I'm um, going to be av available for <laughs> the next two days to talk about all the possible collaborations. Thank you, Mark. While we're getting ready for our next, is there a question for Mark? <laughs> um, so, in some of those cases, you might have people who are sort of from over here, we would think they're living in the same territory, um, but are actually living in very different cultural contexts. Um, have you sort of considered that? Uh, excuse me, I say you repeat it. Effectively, you have people who have a different cultural context, and the top 100 cultural items for them might be very different if they're living the the in, say, Australia. Um, the top 100 cultural context would be very different depending on which language they would speak of. Yeah, absolutely. This is, a, this is a big basket. I mean, the CCC is a big basket. And uh, in each language, we, we really need a, a, a good re resolution mapping so we can get inside the English CCC. Uh, so the other problem you have is effectively um, the, the speakers of a people, are, people in a cultural context of a small English speaking country that are sort of where sort of everything sort of reflects a dominant sort of Anglo American consensus. Um, yeah, if I if I get what you, what you mean, <laughs> the topical distribution inside the CCC is is entirely different, uh, um, and these uh, uh, I published a, a paper about this, uh, and uh, I showed that, for instance, in the Hebrew Wikipedia, the CCC uh, showed what uh, fifty percent about religion, and uh, in the Japanese CCC you find uh, ten percent about technology. So each CCC really reflects the the concepts that really matter to them. Uh, and, and by creating CCC, uh, it's just an instrument of, uh, of getting uh, these articles a bit more uh, at hand in order to later propose lists uh, of specific segments because uh, with the top CCC uh, here, uh, we can choose the, the country as well. So for English uh, CCC, you can select the specific English speaking country with uh, English either native or official, and then look for, uh, uh, and then get the articles about this this part of the CCC. That presumably is only for anything that's geotagged. No, not not just geotagged, but but people, uh, traditions, everything that yeah. in a way has relations to, to the context. But would we have to have a, some some kind of geotagging so that it knows that this person is related to bit of one context and not another? Um, no, um, you, you get to uh, have uh, these properties as well. As, well, as long as it's got those properties filled in with data, basically. Wikidata is a sort of a rich uh, parameterized content, but I, I, I didn't mention that uh, we also use the, the links, the percentage of links talking uh, or mentioning uh, um, the territory or other articles in CCC is also a measure of a relationship uh, to this context. And, and this is uh, very valuable because if a person has 10% uh, or 20% talking about uh, with links to the Catalan uh, uh, territories, it is very likely that this person is related to the, to the Catalan territories, the Catalan speaking territories. So we have features which are uh, very, let's say, um, safe because we, we know for sure that 
a, an article with the word English or the word Burkina Faso is about Burkina Faso and, and English CCC. And we have other features which are a more, uh, with a weaker uh, link, but uh, with enough features uh, in the, when introducing to the machine learning, the machine learning is able to discriminate whether an article should be in or not. This is why uh, after doing the, the blind uh, manual assessment, we, we saw that there were only 5% false positive and 5% false negative. But then, you, then you have the, the kind of issue that if you write, if someone in America writes a book in English, is that English literature because it's written in English, or is it not English literature because it wasn't written in English? It's a continuum. It's a continuum. There, there, um, it, this is a pragmatic uh, approach, as I said in the beginning. Uh, there are no lines between the CCCs, no, no perfect lines. It's a continu continuum between, uh, between uh, territorial entities. Uh, for instance, Lviv, uh, city in uh, Ukraine, was part of uh, Poland. Uh, it's part of the Ukrainian CCC, but it's also part of the Polish. Uh, because uh, it talks about the other uh, Polish uh, things. So this is a, an approach that it's useful to, to get uh, uh, statistics, uh, to depict the general situation, and to provide the list of articles and, and so other kind of solutions. But um, uh, as I said, uh, if we uh, go, uh, if we enter the anthropological discussion about cultural liberty and, and culture itself, uh, we, we get into a very different discussion. <laughs> Okay. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs>